Okay, so in the previous two videos, we got the data down into separate buffers, one for the ship and one for the boundaries. Again, the ship we've been doing forever. I just threw the OpenGL code in front of you, but if I build this and run this, we see our ship and it flies around, which is fine, but we don't see the boundaries. Okay, remember in the previous videos, we just sent data down for these boundary vertices that will make up this diamond shape. But it's not drawing because we haven't told OpenGL to draw that, so... That's what I want to focus on in this video, especially on these two functions here, GL enable vertex attrib array and GL vertex attrib pointer. If you remember when we send data down to OpenGL, either using buffer data or buffer subdata, it's it's all the same in this case. We say, hey, at the buffer bound of this array buffer binding target, we want to send down this data, and this is how big it is in bytes. I remember transformed verts, if I remember right, that's three ver ver vector 3Ds, and vector 3Ds have three floats each, so three times three is nine, nine times four is 36 bytes. We want to send down 36 bytes, copy 36 bytes from this address in memory. That's all we're saying, just go out there and copy it. And if I control shift space right here, we'll see that OpenGL just takes a void star. It's a, it's a pointer to who knows what? OpenGL doesn't care. It's a void star. It's just, I know it's a pointer. I know it's memory. Tell me how much RAM to copy from there, and I will do it. And so copy that many bytes from that memory location. But nowhere in here do we tell OpenGL, hey, by the way, they're, they're ints, or they're floats, or they're, they're two-byte ints, or they're, maybe they're four-byte floats, or eight-byte floats, or who knows. We, we need to tell OpenGL what that data means. And the way we do that is through this nice little function called GL vertex attrib pointer. Now this function and this function are they're tied together pretty strongly. Let me see if I can describe what's going on. First of all, let me scroll back up to our vertex data here. Let's we could, we could talk about either one of these. Let's just say the the ship verte vertices. And I'm going to drag this down. Oh, look, a bigger font. That's kind of fun. Turn your turn your video quality up to high definition cuz we're going to have to get a little bit smaller here. I want to show vertex a trip pointer. Okay, good. So ship verts here. Each vertex is made up of three floats. Okay, each position of the vertex is made up of three floats. Hey, OpenGL, this vertex, it's uh, this this attribute of this vertex is made up of three floats. You see it? So OpenGL, that data I sent down to you, it's three floats per vertex, right? Now what's an attrib? It's an attribute. Attrib is short for attribute. I guess they didn't want to make us type out attribute every time. They say attrib pointer. Well, what's an attribute? The only attribute we've dealt with so far with these vertices are their position. Here's a position, here's a position, here's a position. But if I run the program again and you look at our ship, it draws in white. Okay, well, what if I wanted the ship to draw in a different color? All right, well, that would be another attribute of a vertice. So then what I would say is, well, the colors, colors are described by an RGB. So I would say vector, whoops, vector, 3D. And let's say we wanted a lot of red and half of blue and no, or wait, RGB, R green, R, sorry, red, green, blue. So a lot of red half of green and no blue, like that. Well, now we're describing a color here. And if we do a color on one vertex, we have to do a color on another vertex, so Let me on all the vertices. Let me copy this, paste it, and paste it. So I'm going to use some white space here and separate these. So now we have a vertex that's made up of one, two, three, four, five, six floats per vertex two attributes, one being the color and one being the position. Let me, let me actually draw our vertex structure here. We have our position, X, Y, Z, right? and that's one attribute. And now the next attribute is red, green, blue. It's a color. And then when we go three-dimensional, we'll add on a, a surface normal, which we use for lighting, and that'll be an I and a J and a K and that sort of thing. And there's all sorts of attributes we can add to these vertices. For now, we're just staying simple and using just one attribute position, but that's what a trib means is, hey, the zeroth 
attribute on our vertex is made up of three floats. Okay, now with color, say we wanted to add an alpha here. So our alpha is 1.0, meaning it's so not transparent. Well, we then have to add an alpha to all of our colors. And, and what we would say for that one is, in, in that case, we'd say, our, if, if we wanted to describe color, we could say attribute 1 is made up of four floats. All right, so we are describing our data to OpenGL via this vertex attrib pointer function. Now, we're not this complex quite yet, but we will get that complex, especially when we go 3D. So I'm going to erase all this off, and I actually want to prove to you how these last two arguments work. These last two arguments describe the stride and the offset into the data. So the stride, if you think of yourself walking down the street, if you take big long steps, you have a long stride. Or if you take little steps, then you have a nice short stride. It's, it's the amount of stride or the amount of bytes between each vertex attribute. All right, so let's, let's, let's actually put the color back in here just for demonstration purposes. I'll put a red, green, blue here, and that's, that's these three floats. Okay, but actually we have this alpha here, so so in that case, well, you know what, just to keep it simple, I'm just going to delete the alphas here. Let me, can I do this? Alt, drag, delete, and then I want to kill these commas right here. Okay, very good, so now we have three floats per attribute. And these attribute numbers, this number I pass here, attribute zero, uh, position is attribute zero, and, and color is attribute one, but it's completely arbitrary how I want to do this. I could say this is attribute one and this is attribute zero, as long as I set up the rest of these arguments to point correctly into the data. Let's talk about the stride now. Again, the stride doing with the steps, you take long steps or short steps. Well, how much of a stride do we have between this position and this position? And interestingly enough, Stride is measured from this location to this location. This threw me off for a bit. Right? It's the distance from here through all these floats, through all these floats, to this spot right here. I, I used to think it was from here. We were no, you know, we're going to consume three floats for the position. And then how much of a step do we have to take before we see the next position? That's what I thought it was, but it's not like that. Instead, it's from the from the beginning of where the reading starts, which is right here. Now before we had all the color st attributes in here, let me actually delete them again just temporarily. We didn't have any stride. Okay, You would think the stride in that case would be three times the size of a float because there's three floats here, but really what when we pass zero here, zero is a special value for stride. Zero means hey read the position and then, sure enough, the next one will be the next position. So, zero is a special value. But if I bring those color values back in here using Control Z, now my stride is three times, or six. It's one, two, three, four, five, six times the size of a float, which is four bytes on my machine. But let's just say, let's say six times the size of a float. And then, let, let me just run this and prove to you it's still, we're still getting the same result. Right, the ship will draw, it flies around, we're good. But if we didn't do the stride parameter, let me put a zero back in here, then it's going to interpret these color values as positions, and then we get we get some real weird... Yeah, that's just... Isn't that special? Okay. Anyway, hopefully you're seeing that the stride is important. It describes the distance from here to here. Now, the next value is the offset in into the buffer where the data actually starts. Let me control shift space here and you'll see it's a void pointer, which is hide hideously wrong. It's not a pointer. I don't know why they made the argument type a void star like with buffer sub data. Yeah, here's some data. Go at it. And it looks like this should be a pointer into our, our original data. It's not. It, what OpenGL does is it looks at this pointer as an int. Okay, it says, well, Let's, let's cast it to an int, and that int will tell me how far into the buffer I need to go before I start reading this attribute value. All right, let me, let me just prove that to you. I'm saying zero here, which certainly enough in the buffer, our, our position is at, our position data is at the zeroth 
byte in, in the buffer. But what if I wanted to swap this position in the color? Let's put the color first. So control X, control V. I just put the color up there, which means I need to swap all these colors in these positions. So now the position is the second thing in our buffer. Let's just run that. You'll see we, we probably won't. Yeah, we won't get anything there because all the colors, these represent all the same positions. So it's like drawing a point to OpenGL. And it's like, I'm not going to draw anything. Anyway, our our positions are now are now three floats in to the array. We need to start three floats into the array, start three floats into the array right here, and then to get every position, we need this long of a stride. So to tell it to go three floats into the array, well, well, that's, that's a lot like this, isn't it? We need to say three size of a float, okay, three times four, that's going to be 12 bytes in, start to there, but if I try to build this, the compiler will complain and say, hey, um, 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 it's an int, it's not a void star, I need a pointer, I need a pointer, so, ah, oh, oh, OpenGL, why did you guys define this interface this way? Well, let's, let's slam this to a pointer, it's real simple, void star, void star, uh, take all this, we'll just, wrap this in parentheses. There you go. It's an address now, even though it's really an int. It's an address. Look at it as an address. We're fine. And if I run this, and you'll see certainly... Ah, there's our ship again. It's, we, we started at the right location in the buffer, and then we took the appropriate stride, and we're drawing our ship again. How lovely is that? So, there you go. That is stride. That is uh, the buffer offset. Three floats attribute zero because we only have one or actually we got two attributes now but we're only doing one and then I also want to point out this GL enable vertex a trib array just uh, the only I've looked through so much documentation I can't find a reason why they did this so I'm going to make some assumptions and and that it's for optimizations we, we could have several attributes in a vertex we could have up to however many we want say we had a really big vertex with with position and color and normal and all this other stuff, but we didn't want OpenGL to process all that data. Say we only wanted it to process the position data and maybe the color data in one pass, then another pass we might use all that complicated data. So one thing we could do to optimize, my educated guess here, is to not force OpenGL to process a bunch of data we're not going to use. So then we say, hey, enable this attribute and and this attribute zero and we'll describe what attribute zero is and then if we wanted to do the color we'd have enable attribute one so on and so forth and we could certainly disable them once we're done gl disable you know disable uh, vertex well same thing as this but with a disable on it i believe you know i've never actually disabled vertex let's try it disable build it does that build Oh, yeah, okay, it is disabled. Go figure. If we don't enable this, it's disabled by default, so I'll turn that off, and you'll notice our ship won't even draw. Okay, in fact, we might. No, we don't get an error, but our ship doesn't draw, because we didn't enable that attribute to draw. So there you go. In the <laughs> oh, this video is long. In the next video, we're going to use these two functions to our advantage to draw the, the boundaries of the playing field.